Yeah. Hair flip. Yeah, I'm a badass bitch. I don't like shit. Hair flip. Yeah. Oh my god. So you guys should be happy. Oh my goodness. Hair flip. But anyways, hair flip. And hair flipping on these hoes. Hi. Inside Prince's mysterious estate, the next Graceland. Prince and Elvis Presley in their primes were about as far apart as you could get musically. But growing, if likely, comparisons between the King of Rock and his royal badness are likely to gain traction after reports emerged Tuesday that Prince's Paisley Park home and studio will be turned into a museum. The late musician's brother-in-law, Maurice Phillips, told his son that plans are underway to convert the complex into a memorial. He did not, however, give any timetable for the conversion. And there's still the matter of figuring out who legally will inherit Paisley Park. As well as Prince's estate value at an estimated $300 million, Prince's sister, Tyka Nelson, has said the former left no will. In 1985, 23-year-old architect Brett Thoney was asked to build something he had never constructed before, an artist compound. Back then, this wasn't done. Artists weren't building their own compounds. Only large companies or record labels were, Thoney said in an interview with Billboard Thursday night, April 22nd. But Prince? Prince had a vision that everything under one roof. And this was decades before it was common for any individual to do that. Thony is talking about Prince's infamous Paisley Park, a self-contained 55, 10 million creative complex where the singer was found dead Thursday morning, April 21st. Thony designed the space, which was conceived while filming Purple Rain in 1983 and named for Prince's 1985 song Paisley Park. In collaboration with the singer, a project boasting two state-of-the-art recording studios, a 12,400-square-foot soundstage, rehearsal room, performance area, common areas, and a smattering of office, all of which were utilized for everything from making costumes to sleeping, allegedly where three beds in Prince's personal two-story office around a king and
welcome back to your boy Sean Debbie We are at Paisley Park. Shout out to Prince. Rest in peace to Prince. We have been chilling here all day. Um, it's so, it's just, a, I have it's just such a phenomenal feeling that is going through my body. I like, I just feel so inspired, you know, to literally be at Paisley Park where, you know, Prince created everything that he created you know he was such a great man and so influential you know um at the same time all i can say about paisley park is that it's just a bunch of inspiration like i don't even do music and i'm inspired to do it uh, just to see all of the paintings and how cultural he was and how he truly loved his fans i mean speaking of loving his fans we are in an area he created just for them you know, this area right here is for his fans and for his fans only. I mean, it's a huge situation, a huge area. And he made sure that, you know, he looked out for his fans the most when it came to Paisley Park. So I just appreciate all of everything that Prince did for us you know, while he was here. It couldn't have been an easy thing to be who he was. So we have a lot of tea coming for y'all. I really appreciate y'all joining me and hanging out with me. This has been one of the best days of my life. <laughs> like, if you have never been to Paisley Park, I'm going to need you to go immediately. Um, you know, there are people here that are on this tour that are from all over the world. You know, we have people here from New York today. We have people here from Kansas City, uh, California, you know, all the way here in Minnesota just to be a part of Paisley Park. So. Once again, rest in, peace, uh, rest in peace to Prince. We love Prince. Um, th this has been amazing. So if you have never been to Paisley Park, make sure you come here if you ever have the opportunity because it is completely worth it. So, I mean, I spent a lot of money to do this, but it was worth it. So um, once again, thank y'all so much for joining me. I know the lighting isn't the best in here because I really don't allow cameras and whatnot. So. I'm going to give y'all as much as I can. I love y'all. And once again, thank you so much for chilling with your boy, Sean Everywhere. I love y'all. And let's get right into it. Donna serenaded her for hours. It's also where the fans got to hang out. And while you were here, sometimes Prince would pop up. So that would be so lit to be just sitting here hanging out. And then all of a sudden, Prince pops up. You know what I'm saying? And just starts performing. The home of Prince. This has been an amazing and amazing and amazing type of situation. I'm just so inspired, you know. Um, you really don't know about somebody until you live with them type of situation. And I feel like I live with Prince today, you know what I'm saying? So it was lit, but make sure y'all check out this video. This video is gonna be crazy. I really appreciate all of y'all support. This has been lit once again. Rest in peace. This has been a whole.
Fetus is one of the last places Prince went at Paisley Park. Um, before he passed away, he stopped in one of his offices and he had bought some records from here and he left the records on his desk and they haven't touched him since. So this is dope. So let's walk the path of Prince, shall we? this clip we actually get an interview with the manager of the store electric fetus he actually saw prince one of the last people to actually see him alive in minnesota prince came to electric fetus to buy some records and normally prince will come in the store with his bodyguard after they scoped the scene but this time this store uh, manager decided to come in the back to this private garage where prince will come in you know he basically had us on entrance because that's how much he frequented the store he really loved the store and wanted to partner with electric fetus and he actually did at one point prince had a record that he only sold at electric fetus and it, the store got so busy because so many people were coming in for the record to where they couldn't dispute it you know it's kind of like a distribution company that has the record and then they you know make sure it's on all platforms to where people can buy it you could only get this record at electric fetus so you had people that were coming in all over the world that were coming into electric fetus just to buy this record of prince because he gave it to them exclusively because this is how big of a fan he was and how much he loved to get back and how much he wanted to you know see the area of minnesota especially in minneapolis he wanted them to succeed so he definitely 
definitely did them a solid and gave them a record. And this is one of the people that dealt with Prince when the record was given. So shout out to him. Uh, I'm not going to disclose his name, do this job and all that good stuff. But let's get into this short interview of him stating that he was one of the last people to basically see Prince alive. Story of 2016, and it was later in the evening, and we knew that um, he was coming to call ahead, said he was going to be here. And so he sent his uh, couple of people ahead, and they were out back waiting for him, and I went back to see if they needed a water while they were waiting because it was warm outside. And so they said, sure, so I went and grabbed a couple of waters. Well, I walked outside through the back channels of the store here, and, and uh, and while I was walking out of the office into the garage, the garage door opened yeah, and the guy walked in and it was Prince. So for about a minute there, was just for a few seconds there, it was just me and Prince standing in the room alone together. And I was wow. like, I was like oh, dang, I'm not supposed to be here, am I? <laughs> Even though it's our store. And I just looked up and said, oh, hey, how are you? Uh, uh, you know, welcome and uh, thanks for your support. We really appreciate it. And shook his hand and he smiled and shook my hand. He goes, oh, you're welcome. And so he was very kind. And, and then his bodyguard walked in right behind him and he kind of, looked at me and burned <laughs> burned a hole in me with his eyes kind of like you shouldn't be here yeah. in the room with Prince. So, so did he come in yeah. did you shut the store down when he came in no we didn't actually he came in looked around and then he just shopped around and he was here for there were probably 50 60 people shopping and maybe two or three people everyone you know when they're people are shopping they're they're doing their own thing their heads are down the racks and they look up a little bit most people were shopping they didn't even see him but two or three people saw him and tried to get a photo and the bodyguards kind of stepped in the front and blocked him out but uh, then he, just, he was here for about 20 minutes just in and amongst everybody and then he just checked out and left and said thanks and split so that was the last time we saw him so, so. Anyway. First Avenue is where Prince basically caught a name for himself. He performed there consistently. He met a lot of people. He brought a lot of people to, you know what I'm saying, to First Avenue. A lot of performers, Ice Cube, you name it, they done been there. So the stars are on the wall. So let's get into the stars. First Avenue is the bar, the scene, the club, whatever you want to call it with more social musicians, but it's where Prince made his start. So let's get right into it. Escalator. Yeah. So um yeah, let's go die. Just kidding. Um I'm excited. We're about to go to First Avenue. First Avenue. I love First Avenue. Um I used to go here with my friends when I was younger and who would have thunk it that Prince would have put it on a map? Let's go! Next. 